So here in Australia, we're home to over 600 different species of lizards. But of all of them, these guys have to be the most recognizable, the blue tongue lizard. So stick around guys, in this video, we're gonna talk about 10 things you didn't know about blue tongue lizards. So blue tongue fact number one is that the blue tongue lizard is a type of skink. Now, this shouldn't be any news to all the diehard reptile keepers out there, but to the vast majority of people, skinks are tiny little lizards you find in your backyards, your tails fall off when you catch them. But skinks are incredibly diverse. There's about 1,500 species around the world all up, and they range everywhere from seven centimeter long little garden skinks and things like this, right up to the Solomon Island skink, who is 81 centimeters, or like a foot and a half in length. So the blue tongue lizard fits on the bigger end of that, but he is well and truly a skink. Some of the things that skinks share in common, they've generally got reduced legs, uh, they've got short, flat, fleshy tongues like this guy here, but the blue tongue lizard is just another type of skink. Number two, Australia is actually home to six different species of blue tongue skink. The first one is this guy here, the eastern blue tongue lizard. Now the eastern blue tongue lizard is found from South Australia through all of Victoria, New South Wales, Queensland, and they push westwards where they become their different subspecies, the northern blue tongue, into our Northern Territory and Western Australia. Massive distribution. You've also got the blotched blue tongue lizard, who's found in Victoria, parts of New South Wales, furry corner of South Australia, and is the only blue tongue found in Tasmania. So cold, wet places. After that, you've got the central blue tongue skink, who's found in the center of Australia. You've got the western blue tongue skink, who is found sort of the arid path of Southern Australia. You've got the pygmy blue tongue skink, who is found over in South Australia. And you've got this guy, the shingleback skink, who's sort of the, uh, the outlier in the family, who's again found over a fairly significant chunk of arid Southern Australia. So six different species of blue tongue skinks here in Australia. Fact number three, blue tongue skinks aren't just found here in Australia. While we are well and truly the blue tongue capital of the world, there is also blue tongues over in Papua New Guinea and Indonesia. So you've got the Indonesian blue tongue skink, who's broken into three different subspecies over there. And you've also got some subspecies of the Eastern blue tongue skink who are found overseas as well, such as the Tanimbar Island blue tongue and potentially the Irinjaya blue tongue as well. So blue tongue skinks, not just found here in Australia. Fact number four, even within the species, there's a whole heap of variation within individual blue tongue skinks. So with the blotched blue tongue here, for example, these guys will look slightly different based on different parts of the country, but there's actually two major color morphs. These guys are what we call the lowlands color morph, or the common blotched blue tongue. But there's also the alpine blotched blue tongue, who's much brighter in color, glossier color black, uh, things like this. Eastern blue tongues as well, go everywhere from sort of a greeny color to a silver color. And as you go further north, they lose these stripes entirely and can be all sorts of speckles and spots and, and all sorts of crazy colors. So they're very, very highly variable between the species, but even within individuals around the country. Number five, there are some species and subspecies of blue tongues who are actually considered threatened or even endangered. You see, the Western blue tongue skink in New South Wales is considered a threatened species. And here in Victoria, it's near threatened. There's one subspecies of the shingleback skink on Rottnest Island, who is considered a vulnerable species. But the best example is by far over in South Australia, the pygmy blue tongue skink, who is in fact so endangered that it was considered extinct up until 1992, when one was rediscovered inside the stomach of a brown snake. Now, this prompted the search to find where they are and if they're still out there. And today, the estimates is that there's between five and 7,000 pygmy blue tongue skinks out there with numbers continuing to decline. Their major threat so far has been habitat loss. These guys are entirely dependent on spider burrows and things like cropping where we work up the soil uh, destroys those spider burrows. The major issue they're gonna face in the future, however, is climate change. You see, the habitat that's left is sort of locked in between two different arid zones. And uh, as that dries out, they can't move further south. So there's efforts today to actually catch some, bring them to a place further south than where they exist, and hopefully reintroduce them in sort of a buffer zone to allow for potential future climate change. Number six is that all the blue tongue family actually give birth to live young rather than laying eggs. Now this might not sound that crazy. Lots of animals give birth to live young, but amongst reptiles, it is actually fairly unusual. You see only about 15% of the world's reptiles give birth to live young rather than laying eggs. Laying eggs is kind of their ancestral form. There is however some advantages to giving birth to live young. And the major one is it's enabled many of the blue tongues to live in surprisingly cold places. Things like our blotch blue tongues live in cold, damp places, even far south as the bottom of Tasmania, where eggs don't do very well. To be able to lay eggs, you've got to do two things. You've either got to incubate them, keep them warm yourself, or live in an environment where the external temperature is sufficient for those eggs to hatch. 
These guys, by giving birth to live young, they essentially carry eggs inside their stomach from warm place to warm place before they pop them out as live babies. So this live bearing habit enabled them to live in colder places than some of their egg laying counterparts. And it means that all of our blue tongues give birth to live young. Number seven, the number of young they give birth to varies widely, not just between individuals, but also between species. On one extreme, we've got the shingleback skink, who almost exclusively gives birth to twins, sometimes one, very rarely three, almost always twins, but they're very big babies. On the other extreme, things like the eastern blue tongue can give birth to over 10 babies at a time. Now, there is two different sort of chains of thought to these two strategies. By giving birth to fewer babies who are bigger, those babies individually have a higher chance of survival. They're gonna be bigger when they approach their first winter, their first brumation, so their chances of survival are higher. But if one gets eaten, it's a big deal. On the other hand, if you have lots of babies, they're gonna be born smaller, but you can compensate for some of them getting eaten. So yeah, the number of babies varies widely between the species. Number eight, their tongue's not just blue, but it's ultraviolet blue. You see, bright colors in nature generally represent danger. Things like blue ringed octopus, venomous snakes, poisonous frogs, certain dangerous insects, bright colors and animals were saying, don't come near me, I'm dangerous. Now clearly this guy's not dangerous. He's faking it till he makes it. But if that's not enough, by being ultraviolet, it actually has the potential to startle predators. You see things like birds, who are a major predator of lizards, they actually see a wider spectrum of colors than what we do. So what looks bright blue to us is blinding flash to a bird. So that ultraviolet color gives that sort of a, a half a second startle and time for the lizard to scuttle on and get away. Number nine. Blue tongue lizards live a surprisingly long time. Now it's hard to guess exactly how old any animal in the wild is and therefore hard to gauge true estimates of wild lifespans. But we're guessing that wild blue tongue lizards live to a maximum of about 15 years. However, these guys are such popular pets that we have loads of records of how long they live in captivity with them regularly reaching over 20 years of age and occasionally even surpassing 30 years of age. Now. This might not sound long compared to macaws and people and whales, but it is twice as long as dogs, and it's twice as long as a comparatively sized animal like the bearded dragon. So fairly long lifespans for blue tongue skinks. And lastly, number 10. The blue tongue family were the first terrestrial reptiles described either formally or informally by Europeans when they arrived here in Australia. You see, the first one is this guy here, the shingleback skink, who was described in 1688 by part pirate, part naturalist, Englishman William Dampier. On the west coast of Australia, his records indicate that he found a lizard with a stumpy tail that resembled its head and plated body that resembled a crocodile, being the shingleback skink. Almost 100 years later, William Anderson, who was a naturalist aboard the Endeavour, James Cook's ship, during his trips around Australia, formally described the blotch blue tongue while he found one off the coast of Tasmania. He also had John Weber, the artist on board, do a scientific illustration of that blotch blue tongue lizard, making the blue tongues the first reptiles or first terrestrial reptiles to be informally described, formally described and illustrated by Europeans here in Australia. So there you have it guys, there's 10 of my favourite facts about the blue tongue lizard. Let me know in the comments how many of these were new to you, how many did you already know, what cool blue tongue facts is there I should have included. Now, as always, guys, this video is brought to you by our wonderful Patreon supporters. We've got to thank them. Their contribution makes our channel possible. But other than that, guys, if you haven't already, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, check on back next time. Lots more wildlife content coming. Be nice to wildlife. Have a good one. Take care.